Earth League Podcast here coming to you on February 23rd, 2020 on a Sunday afternoon, a rare Sunday we record, but of course football's over, so it doesn't, you know, it's open now, Sunday, Sunday afternoon open for me now. Um, how you guys doing? Um, been a little bit, been a little bit of time since we recorded a podcast, been actually been about, I think about 10 days since we recorded a podcast, um, but uh, sometimes you need a break, although I, I can't say I had a break, um, I've, uh, first off, um, I relaunched my my wife and I's podcast, uh, That's So Christian, last week. We dropped an episode on Friday, um, which is pretty good. You can find it, of course, here on the website, net, or you can find it also on any of the podcast catchers out there. Um, obviously, the wrestling podcast, Take the Wrestling Podcast, is still going strong. i um, recording an episode tonight um, with, the, with the boys, Mike and Joe. It should be a good show tonight. Um, but I've kind of sort of, uh, with this show, I've actually, uh, to some degree... Uh, not honestly taking a break. Uh, I almost it wasn't on purpose. This time, whatever the time allowed for me to do to sh- to do to record, you know, you just do what you gotta do. Um, so I t- decided to just you know focus on the other on the other uh, projects and stuff. Um, I'm also considering uh, relaunching. Also, not so re- I guess you can say relaunching because I, I never really stopped doing it, but I haven't done it in a while. Uh, my video show, the unfiltered uh, show, Earth Week Unfiltered, which is t- you know a video show, but um, uh, you know, uh, trying to get that going, and um, this uh, hopefully this week I'll start doing some shows. Not sure what I do every day, but definitely most times a week. Um, you know, uh, less than fifteen minutes if possible. It's possible. Doing the car, doing the home, whatever it may be. Uh, so, other than that, that's what's, uh, what's going on here uh, on my end. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the Democratic National Democratic uh, presidential race. It's it's getting crazy, um, and it doesn't. I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't really care what side of the fence you're on. Republican, Democrat, red, blue, liberal, conservative. Who gives a shit? I'm an MPA, so none of those uh, parties really suit me anyway. Uh, but it is a fascinating case study. It is a fascinating time. I will say, um, you know, to, to the people who are complaining about how there's, there's no good candidates on the Democratic side, you know, they're all chaotic, all crazy. Well, I think it's lazy to say that personally, in my opinion. You may not, you may not agree with people, certain people's positions, but to sit here and say that there is no good candidates or no good, you know, good, po- good talking points being discussed here, I think that's pretty ludicrous, in my opinion. Um, you do have a pretty diverse base of people. Within the party to have different ideas. Um, now Bernie Sanders, of course, is leading the pack right now. He's he is as of today, um, since since the Nevada caucus ended. Uh, although they're still telling the votes now, we haven't gotten official uh, numbers and delegates he's got, but he's going to win the most delegates, obviously. Um, but we uh, as of today, he is the prohibitive favorite now to win the nomination, um, as he's won Nevada. Um, it's going to be fascinating because Bernie Sanders, you know, obviously a populist, very popular with, with his base. Um, some can would, would argue it's comparable to Trump's base in terms of the the fervent, the fervor that he creates, you know, from his uh, his supporters. Um, there's definitely a divide within the party about what direction to go in. You know, you have the Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warrens of the world who are more on the progressive, more far left progressive side. Um, in terms of what policy ideas they got, I would say Bernie's even further more to the left than anybody in, in that's in this race. Um, you do you do have some of the moderates, uh, and uh, you know Amy Klobuchar, Pete Buttigieg, uh, Joe Biden's in the world who are a little more conservative Democrats. I, I want to say I don't know if I call them conservative either. I, I definitely call them moderate Democrats, a little more to the middle. And then you have Michael Bloomberg, who's <laughs> Like, who's right now sticking like a sore thumb, uh, and uh, horrible performance on the on the debate stage last week, um, last Wednesday. Don't know if he hurt his campaign yet. We'll see. Um, obviously, we he will. He's not. He has not declared for anything until he won't be uh, officially part of the race until they get to uh, Super Tuesday, which is March third, which is actually next week Tuesday, not this week, but next week Tuesday, and. Um, 
that's when he'll have uh, his key, he'll will know how much delegates he can he can gain. Um, he's pumping out money to the states that are up for grabs. I think it's 13 states, and I, I think about 170, maybe 160. I don't know the exact number, but it's definitely 160 to 70 delegates up for grabs on Super Tuesday. So he can possibly, depending on, we'll see if he made some ground. Um, but his advertisement, he's put a lot of money in advertising. Um, Michael Bloomberg has, and so we'll see if he's uh. We'll see if he's um if that impact is, is gonna be felt because his performance on, on last week was not uh, one for the ages. Um, and I got I gotta tell you, as someone who is not a Democrat, I'm an outsider, so I can't vote. I have no influence. I'm I'm, I'm actually, actually kind of glad I'm not, you know, you know, part of a party because it would be tough to. I actually wouldn't know who to vote for. Number one. Um, I like Bernie Sanders as a person. I do think some of his ideas are a little... I don't say a little, maybe... A little, I'll, 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 admit, I'll confess, strong to the left of my taste, personally. I'm, I'm, I'm a fiscal conservative <laughs> by nature. I, 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 you know, a lot of my conservatives... I always, I've always said for years that my conservatism, especially when I was a Republican before 2007, um, all is within the confines of the, the, uh, the economy and economics and Whatnot. So I, I consider myself a fiscal conservative who believes in smaller government. I don't know if I believe in small government, but smaller definitely. Um, and uh, Bernie's policies would require more government involved, government um, being involved in your day to day, healthcare especially. But I do acknowledge that the healthcare system is broken. So which way do you go? You know, healthcare. I believe at least I think basic healthcare should be all, all right. Um, and. Um, you know, I, I guess that's where I stand on the issues. Um, whereas a lot of Democrats, like Pete Buttigieg, uh, Joe Biden, are, you know, they do support Medicare for all. Well, I know Buttigieg definitely supports Medicare for all if you want it. And I, you know, it's, it's, it's really tough to make the, you know, it's really hard to make a, to discuss this topic with people on the right, even in the middle, and certainly on the left too, all across the board, about Medicare and universal health care and whether or not what direction you're going, because a lot of the rhetoric, a lot of the discussion points I see on social media all the time, people I talk to, people I'm friends with, it's so disingenuous. It's all wrapped around in, in political bias, biases. You know? And, uh, some of it you see a lot of propaganda out there. You know, people putting out stuff, um, memes out there of uh, uh, Bernie's plan, which is not even Bernie's plan. You know, and my thing is, if you're gonna, you know, I know you're not, uh, you know, for Bernie Sanders, but if you're not, if you're gonna at least share correct, you know, information, not propaganda. But again, this is time of year too. This is election year, so we do what you can. To, you, you know, <laughs> obviously. Um, but I'm really curious how this turns out because. 2016 was a lesson learned. I, I, you would think it's a lesson learned for Democrats. Um, but there are a lot of Democrats in the middle, uh, moderate Democrats, who do not want Bernie Sanders to win the nomination. For whatever reason, whether it be the policies, whether it be the fact that they just, they just don't think they'll be, he'll, he'll be Donald Trump in the general election. Um, there's a lot of reasons why they don't want him to win the, the nomination. So I'm really curious that if he wins the nomination... You know, which right now it looks like we're going in that direction. Whether or not those same Democrats who are hell bent on him not winning the nomination, will they fall in line? Because I've heard people too say that, you know, as much as they don't like Donald Trump, and we're talking about Democrats here, I've heard some Democrats say that they would probably rather deal with the force of Trump than having to have Bernie, Bernie Sanders' policies become uh, a reality. In the next four years, because they, they believe it's extreme. So it, it's it's basically the reverse situation now. Where in 2016, when Hillary Clinton won the nomination, um, many folks either a stayed home, b vote a third party, or c, uh, which is which which did happen, and especially a lot of Bernie supporters um, voted for Donald Trump. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering if if the same situation could play out again, going the opposite way, whereas those moderates now who were obviously for Hillary Clinton in 2016, don't want Bernie Sanders, and now they're on the losing end of, of the, the primaries. 
will they come together and will they actually, uh, you know, despite Bernie's fall of policies, will they come together and vote for him over Donald Trump? You know, you you would say yes, it should be easy, it should be, it should be an easy decision on on their part, but yet nothing's easy. Nothing is uh, easy at all. It, you know, and pride, ego, you know, loyalty. You know, I I, I, I say the Democratic Party is definitely it, it, it eats its own sometimes. I really, it, it's, this is why I, I can I me personally I can never be one. Um, but uh, it's gonna be fascinating how this plays out because you have all the some of the big stars you call it uh, from the Democratic Party, you know, making their uh, you know their, their voices heard. The James Carvels of the world, you know, former Clinton consultant, you know, very clear he does not like Bernie Sanders, but. If Bernie Sanders is your nominee, are you going to check Mark Bernie Sanders in November? That's a good question, and I'm not so sure he'll do that. Will he vote third party? Will he write in somebody? Will he vote for Trump? You know, it, it's a, there's a lot of different angles this can go in. It's very, very uh, fascinating stuff. But you know, and again, you know, people <laughs> be like, oh, you talk politics, podcast, and I love it. I love talking politics. I love it. It's great. So. That's just my opinion on that. Okay, um, so I've been binging a lot of WWE ne- uh, network stuff as of late on you know some of the content they put out there. They so the, the network actually recently they started a series on there that's focused around the ruthless aggression era. Now, the ruthless aggression. If you're, if you're a wrestling fan, of course, the ruthless, ruthless aggression era. Is the era after the Attitude Era? Um, now, if you obviously familiar with wrestling, you should know what I'm talking about here. This is like between 2002 and 2008, nine, what do we call it? And uh, this is the era where John Cena thrived. This is the era where Brock Lesnar started and thrived for a little while. Um, this is post Austin. This is the end of Austin and the Rock. Post all that. Um, now, I didn't watch that era at all. Like I know the names and stuff. I was some of the names that were mid quarters in the Attitude Era end up being. Big players in the ruthless aggression era, like you know Edge and Christian and guys that of that magnitude. Um, so they started. Uh, they, they're doing. A, I don't know how much how much uh, different uh, parts they're gonna have of this documentary. Um, they've put out two so far. They put the first one focusing on the transition from attitude to ruthless aggression, ruthless aggression, and then part two, the second uh, series of that was the um, the John Cena, the rise of John Cena. Um, I think tomorrow they're putting out the uh, the third installment, which is going to focus on Evolution. Uh, that was the faction between uh, Triple H, um, with Triple H, Ric Flair, Randy Orton, and I think Batista also. Uh, it was in that as well. Um, so I've been I'm I'm I'm, I'm excited about the uh, about the series because you know, I didn't watch this era, but I'm always fascinated to see how things progressed, what was done, the transition. Because remember that era, you know. When the WWE and Vince McMahon, you know, beat WCW, which I always said, uh, is that so much they beat them? That's more so that WCW beat themselves. Um, when they won the wars, won that wars, you know, on one hand, yeah, they were able to buy the company, able to get, get you know all the talent, a lot of to you know, get their, you know, all the rights to all their stuff, you know, videos, you know, whatever it may be. But the flip side is that now that we don't have, we don't have competition, who are you fighting? And furthermore, when you don't have competition, um. How do you push yourself to rise again to another level? And there was a a, a point when after Vince bought the w, bought WCW that WWE kind of sort of got stale creatively, you know. Add to the fact that The Rock started doing movies, which eventually the guy, which eventually by 2004 he was out of the out of the company for a long, about seven years. Austin ends up retiring after all three at the rest of 2019 because of his neck issues, you know. So you're looking at the development of a new era, developing new stars, you know. Brock Lesnar was the one was was next in line. John Cena was next in line. A couple of the guys. It's a fascinating era, and I didn't watch it because I, you know, that's around that time I stopped watching wrestling. I, I, I I've said in this podcast many times earlier. I stopped watching wrestling after 2002, which is the Hogan Rock uh, Icon vs Icon matchup in WrestleMania of 2002, WrestleMania X8. So I'm enjoying that. I'm um, really am enjoying um, that um, that documentary. So the two episodes in so far. And uh, well, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, they, they, like I said, they're gonna, they're gonna show the um, they're gonna show the um, evolution, and probably about, I'm sure they're gonna have a Brock Lesnar uh, match as well too. So okay, 
Now, this week is the WWE, staying on wrestling real quick, this week is the WWE Super Showdown Saudi show, which I'm not really a big fan of normally, but I gotta tell you, the card for, the, for this show is actually not that terrible. Um, you have Super Showdown coming up this week for WWE. Um, you got AEW Revolution, this is a t- totally, se- totally separate company, AEW, uh, which is coming up um, this coming Saturday, which I'll obviously I'll, I think I'll do another uh, podcast this week and preview that um, by the end of the week. Um, but then WWE also has the Elimination Chamber coming up, I believe, March 8th, I believe, uh, not not next weekend, the weekend after, and that's the last we review before we get to WrestleMania. So it's a lot of a lot of things going on in WWE in terms of events, in terms of story building, whatnot. You know, and obviously the Super Showdown thing is very controversial because it's in Saudi Arabia. A lot of the rights issues and whatnot, and people don't like to get in, you know, involved in that. But I gotta tell you, I'm looking through this card right now, and uh, I, I gotta tell you the 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 um the breakdown, the the card is pretty solid for a what, what I call a glo- over glorified house show. Any of the any of these Saudi shows are what I call over glorified house shows. Um. So let me go through the card real quick and get some predictions. Um, obviously, we'll do this also on the wrestling podcast too. This um, tonight on Take Your Wrestling Podcast, we'll discuss the in detail. All right, you got the once again the Roman Reigns, Baron Corbin steel cage match. It's supposed to be the last time they meet. They've been feuding, these guys have been feuding since I started watching the product in June. Um, so I mean, give me Reigns this match. Of course, this is the end, end of the. Of the uh, of the few to reigns of the Corbin in a steel cage. It should be an f- f- interesting match. I'm tired of this rivalry, obviously, too, but we got to move Reigns on to WrestleMania as the main thing guy, probably, um, for the title. Uh, the Twake Trophy Gauntlet match, which is... There are one, two, three, four, five, six participants in this in this match. AJ Styles, Andrade, Bobby Lashley, Eric Rowan, R-Truth, and Ros- Rusev. I mean, I mean, if I had to pick a winner, I mean, I I guess AJ Styles will win this, right? I guess AJ Styles is the biggest name of, of the bunch here, so I guess AJ Styles will win this. Uh, got the Raw Tag Team Championships on the line between Seth Rollins and Murphy versus the Street Profits. Um, I don't see Murphy and Rollins losing the title just yet. Um, so I bet it should be a good match though. Profits are great, um, great tag team, of course. Um, this call from this got called from NXT a couple months ago too. Um, the SmackDown Tag Team Championship on the line between New Day um, versus the uh, versus the Miz and John Morrison. Um, I, I gotta tell you, I, I I'm gonna pick New Day to win this match, but it wouldn't shock me if Morrison and Miz win the tag titles. It wouldn't shock me. Although on SmackDown this past Friday there was a tease that uh, there was a little bit of a tease um, that maybe the Usos will be next in line for a shot against New Day, but we'll see what happens there. Um. Yeah, the SmackDown Women's Championship on the line between Bailey and Naomi. Um, Naomi, gosh, she's beautiful. Um, I think Bailey holds on to the title, but I think Naomi being back in the company after I think she was out for a year, at least since WrestleMania last year. Because I remember I hadn't seen, prior to Royal Rumble, I hadn't seen, had never saw her until the Rumble, and she should be. I, I was telling G W Gross on, on the podcast last week that she should be in that conversation of top women in the company. Like, she, to me, is as good as the Charlotte Flores of the world, as good as the Becky Lynch's of the world, Bailey's, all that. She should be, she should be propping up the uh, women's brand. I think her being on SmackDown is going to help the women's brand a lot. Um, because it's been lacking on that, on that brand anyway. But I think Bailey wins this match for now. Um, I can see some Gaga involved in this, though, but I think Bailey wins this match for now. Um, you got Bray Wyatt against The Fiend, against, against Goldberg. A lot of folks think that Goldberg might win this, uh, might win this match. Um, I hope it doesn't happen. I mean, it, it it would be very sad if the Fiend loses the t- loses this title now before WrestleMania. There was no doubt he lose the title WrestleMania, probably because Roman Reigns or hell maybe even John Cena. But I didn't think that they would consider taking the belt off of Bray Wyatt this soon, um, in a Saudi event. And by the way, he won the title at the last Saudi event, um, at Crown Jewel, um, in October on Halloween against Seth Rollins. But I also don't see the company burying Goldberg either in the process. You know, Goldberg's a legend, and that'll look bad. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm, I'm going to stick with my theme prediction, prediction that he keeps the title. Goldberg with my D, DQ, and then go from there. Um, but the whole I, I will say something about, about this about this build up. 
at least they're putting a lot of time into this. At least they're actually uh, putting in um, some work on this on this on this build up between these two. Because this was a match I didn't really care about, I'll be honest with you. So, but give me give me Goldberg by DQ. Um, and finally, the Brock Lesnar against Ricochet for the WWE Championship. I mean, this this I mean, there's no way Ricochet's a champion champion going into WrestleMania. Um, this this is just another stopgap to get to, get to Mania. Um, no way. You, there's no way you're gonna have Ricochet against Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania. That's not, not gonna happen. Lesnar wins this match. He's the champion and move on to uh, to to Mania. So there's your uh, Super Showdown preview. Uh, later in the week we'll do uh, we'll do a preview on on AEW's Revolution. So that's that. Okay. Uh, what else got here to talk about before I get out of here? Uh, my son has been doing very well at school lately. Um, he's gotten, remember I was t- a couple episodes back, probably it was in January, uh, the last Soul Pod did, I mean, January, I was saying here that he, was, he had been struggling a little bit uh, at school, not so, with, with his grades, he's actually doing very well academically, and has continued to be doing well, well academically for the most part. It's been some behavior issues that we had to work on, um, Well, he's been, in, especially in school, but he's been doing very well the last, uh, uh, I would say, month and a half. Um, they have a color system they have at school at his school um obviously red is red is bad blue is okay and green is great he's gotten green most of the way not has got one red in about a month and a half um he's got a couple of blues here and there which is fine um but the greens he's it's been it's been a lot of greens in fact in fact the last on friday this past this last time in school got green as well too um so i'm really proud of, of the turnaround he's been doing um and i tell you it's a challenge because like We've had my wife and I've had to adjust some of our parenting styles a little bit to kind of sort of, you know, not to acquiesce to him, but to, you know, test our patience to, to make sure that he understands that even if we punish him for things he does, that we love him, that we, um, that you know, we understand his situ- you know, what he's going through, and you know, we understand, you know, his frustrations on certain things, but then we ha- we have to learn to not kind of get frustrated early in the process of doing that. So it's been it's been a challenge as of late, but he's been phenomenal. He's been great in school. His grade he has he had his report card recently. Uh he uh did he did very really really well. I mean you can't complain about that. Um uh, obviously I said the behavior was was an issue for a while but that seemed to be, have been turned around now and I'm really proud of him. Um and uh you know it, it, it's a tribute to you know I'm not gonna you know pat us on the back here or my wife's but you know we do you know with our schedules it's, it's hard to always be there with him together as a family all the time um but we managed to make some certain adjustments i remember i was saying on the, on the pod back in december that i had changed my schedule recently i had changed my schedule um in the fall and that seems to have have had a positive um influence on him i think because me being home with him being able to help with homework be able to have more family time not working at nights i think has helped um him um with the situation in terms of uh, uh, his schoolwork, in terms of his behavior, in terms of just being more happier. I mean, he loves when we're home. He loves when I'm home, especially um, to be able to, you know, spend have father son time. So, um, obviously, really, really excited about the change he's made, and I'm really, really happy for him. So, anyway, that will do it. I guess a little short pod today. Uh, I wanted just want to check in. I'll probably do another one in a couple of days. Um, and I'll keep updated about all the projects going on. We actually, I, I said, I've, I've started to become more active on the podcast uh, scene in terms of other shows, um, in terms of uh, launching, you know, other, whether it's relaunching, you know, my wife and I's uh, podcast, which you guys should check out. Uh, that's so Christian on all the podcast catchers of choice. Also on the website, Um you, know, you have the Take Three Wrestling Podcast, which you can check out as well, too, if you choose to. And I'm really considering going, you know, Relaunching the unfiltered um, video show I do, which also has a podcast feed for it as well too. So that's stuff for, uh, for now. Uh, I'll tell you guys later. God bless y'all. We'll talk soon and uh, enjoy your Sunday. Take care.